an absolute delight to welcome you here to the Oxford Union for our second e-learning debate. The motion this evening is this House believes that technology-based informal learning is more style than substance. A thoroughly modern motion to be debating at one of the world's oldest universities. And yet, I think it's a rather appropriate one because Oxford is a place of quads, of high tables, and of common rooms, all designed for social gatherings that facilitate informal learning. The public, they don't want to think about it. They want us to give them assurances, assurances that we have systems that test for the competence of the teachers, assure that the people who operate the trains know how to do it, that the people who read our mammograms know what they're looking at, and even this is true of the people who work in our treasured football academies. We want to know that they know what they say they know. Informal is, in fact, fine and dandy when lives and fortunes are not on the line. When they are on the line, perhaps informality is OK if it's not your life or your fortune. When informal technology-based learning is characterized by lack of standards, sketchy practice, scant evidence, few authoritative voices, and the lack of self-assessments and assessments, well, then it is just what the proposition says it is. Informal technology-based learning is more form than substance. Thank you. In the early 80s, uh, organizations told colleagues, don't bring your PC into the organization. We have our own computer systems, our own spreadsheets, et cetera. Uh, leave your PCs at home. Well, people brought the PCs in because they enabled them to be more productive and do a, their jobs better. Today, people in organizations are looking around and educators and CLOs and others are looking around and they're seeing their colleagues getting online and working on a social network or uh, helping to create software for somebody. They're going, what's going on here? N what's going on is that individuals are empowered by the technology and they can ch go where they want to go online for information that they can trust and that will enable them to do better work in their own context. So enabling their own productivity. Um, so it's changing where we go for information and who we collaborate with and it's breaking down the boundaries of existing institutions. And um, the trick is to figure out how institutions can understand that and uh, capture the value of networked individuals, not to penalize and deride informal technology-based learning. I actually think it is so wrong-headed even to use the term informal. I mean, seriously. Not only do I think it's wrong-headed, I think it's arrogant, and I think it's irresponsible. You know, most people believe that the majority of what we learn is done at work, at play, in life. And so just to use the term informal you know, there's nothing, I assure you, informal about teaching a child not to touch a hot stove or teaching that same child to ride a bike. I mean, I assure you, there is nothing informal about being able to sell or build something or, or bill it or ship it. You know, this is very, very formal. And so just the whole notion of calling something informal, I think, dampens down our wisdom and our ability to really do the hard work. The questions that business is asking us, so they're not asking us to create a, a leadership development program uh, and make it you know, informal from formal. They're basically saying, as Allison said, put all this thing together in thoughtful, deliberate, intentional frameworks that you study and get proven so that you can actually do what the rest of the world has done and leverage technology to help people learn better. So I would ask you all just to be honest and say, yes, we all love technology, and we'll get there sometime. But on the scale today of substance and style, we're definitely more on the style side and more action than proof. This House believes that technology-supported informal learning is more style than substance. <laughs> 
That is so totally absurd and ridiculous that you may have noticed, I'm the fourth American in a row. We're in Oxford, you know, but fourth American in a row. I thought maybe Epic is pulling a little funny joke and seeing if the Americans would be stupid enough to come in and debate a non-issue because our, prop our opposition is the, the only possible way you can look at this thing. And I remember talking with a senior executive from Nancy's former firm who comes up to me and says, Jay, how do you know it works? How do you know this informal stuff has any results? And I said, Samuel, how did you learn to talk? How did you learn to walk? I mean, we don't, we don't go to school for things like that. We learn them informally. Really, it's the test of time which separates out style from substance. So I ask you to think of your own informal learning, technology-supported informal learning. I mean, if you search for anything on Google, have you been inspired by a TED Talk? Have you watched a video on YouTube or a documentary on the BBC? Have you attended a meeting after dark that uses electric lights to illuminate what's going on? I mean, all of these are technology-supported informal learning. And if you say, no, 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 that's just, you know, mere style, it's all going to go away. I don't need to look stuff up on Google or find my friends on the net. That, that's, you know, the same style category as Lady Gaga and Chat Roulette. And if, if that's what you think, you go through the eye door. But if you think, as I do, that, you know, here's an opportunity to really change the world, and we better get better at imply, in, applying informal learning, that, that's when you want to go through the no door. You're, I'd be reading a, a friend of mine's book on the new social learning. And I just want to read a passage from a noted academic who said, the most significant thing going on in workplace training and development today is that we've punched through the walls of the classroom to allow experts and peers to bring their messages closer to work and life through technology. I had my doubts about the learningfulness of social nets until I began to use one as a key aspect of my graduate class on performance consulting. I don't anymore. My students worked in teams, conducted research, created presentations, sought experts, stirred up conversations, even conflict, and endeavored to engage people beyond our registered classmates. Maybe 65 students over two years have been real students in the class. We've touched more than 500 as they join use, and add to the online net. It was much better in almost every way. And that's from Dr. Allison Rossett. Thank you. Another thing I'm hearing from the proponents is they want, they want it bottled. They, informal learning is not good. I mean, these are professionals. They want to bottle this. They want gates around it. They want institutionalized, structured, evaluated, controlled. Okay, that's what I have to say about that is institutions can use the internet and everything we know about the internet and informal learning in any way they want to enhance educational institutions. And they do. Oxford University uses the internet in all sorts of ways to enhance the reach and access to the university and access to our holdings and, and manuscripts and so forth. That's wonderful, and we can enhance educational institutions that way. But that doesn't mean that you cannot also embrace the fact that individuals can use the internet in a, to enhance their own communicative power and their ability to get access to information anywhere in the world. Even if they're at Oxford, they can get it from Cambridge, they can get it from anywhere in the world. And, and that should enhance it, because we've got more accountability. If we say the wrong thing in a lecture, if we state the wrong fact, we will be held accountable. And that's going to raise this bar at informal institutions. So that's good. For the motion, we've heard that formal doesn't get applause, but it does do the job. Uh, against the motion, we've heard that people who don't trust the internet are the kind of people who don't use the internet. Um, and we've, we, we've been told for the motion that failure is not an option, and we've been told by one of the speakers against the motion that what you can do today is an opportunity to change the world. That's how important all this is. So, what I'm now going to invite you to do in a moment is file out of the chamber. Now, the, the, the technology here is complex, so I want you to listen very carefully. If you're downstairs, 
You go through the right-hand door if you want to vote in favour of the motion, the eyes, uh, or the left-hand door if you're one of the no's. And a reminder again, the motion is, this House believes that technology-based informal learning is more, than style, uh, is more style than substance. So if you believe that, uh, you're an I, and if you don't believe it, you're a no. And if you